I'm Janet Barrington, I'm a neonatal consultant and I work in Newcastle and I've been talking about the approach to breastfeeding or feeding preterm babies in a NICU and particularly important to me is the threats faced to those babies by diseases such as necrotizing enterocolitis and sepsis. We now have good data that's specific to preterm babies that looks at mother's own milk and outcomes such as survival or the development of necrotizing enterocolitis or the rates of infection and shows that babies have less of all of those really important events the more of their own mother's milk they receive. It was about the practicalities of what you really do if you've got a very preterm baby, what you do in terms of when you might start to offer milk to that baby, what decisions you might make if you don't have enough mother's own milk and how long you might wait and what you choose to use in the absence of it, how quickly you progress their feeds once you've got milk feeding started. So it was a very practical conversation around decisions that we face every day on a neonatal unit. So the really tiniest babies will never be able to be fully and truly fed to begin with. Quite the point in gestation where that's true, I think we are still learning about that, but this sort of 23, 24 weekers will not be able to be fully and truly fed on day one. So even if we had milk available, they wouldn't tolerate it. They need something that isn't into their gut, so they need parental nutrition. But the more mature babies, perhaps you can feed more quickly. So it was about, uh, yes, the use of breast milk, uh, to be the main nutritional support entirely for those babies and then about the rates of progression once you've got them establishing their first little bit. So that's the SIFT trial which is quite new data which is not quite published but we've been presenting uh, places like this which shows that there is no adverse effect of t trying to feed babies a little bit faster than we might have done traditionally. So you can feed at 30 mils a kilo a day as opposed to 18 mils a kilo a day and not have any adverse events, so no increase in sepsis, no increase in neck. So ADEPT was a little, uh, little longer ago, uh, so it told us, or it answered the question which is, should you wait when a very tiny baby is first born, or should you just offer it milk as soon as that milk is available? So it looked at starting on day two compared to starting on day six, and again showed that starting on day two is just as safe as waiting, and of course those babies then get exposure to all the good things in breast milk sooner. So most people now would use that data as good evidence to say we should start and feed as soon as we have mum's milk available. We've been developing a repository for samples from the preterm babies to help us to understand why some babies get these gut problems, so why do some babies get neck, why do some babies get sepsis. So we've been uh, depositing samples to allow us to do translational science to look at what it is that drives those disease processes or what it is that's protective and prevents some babies getting those diseases. We keep uh, everything that traditionally would go in a bin, uh, so we keep all of the babies poo and all of their wee and we keep small samples of maternal milk, so the milk that's left in a tube at the end of a feed or that's left in the bottle before we give the baby the milk, uh, we would keep that um, and we keep any blood that's taken from the baby for a clinical reason, so we might need to know the haemoglobin, so we do a blood test. Obviously we do that first, but then if there's something left over, we keep that. And occasionally a baby who does have problems with its gut will go to theatre, and we keep a small amount of the gut that's resected if the baby needs to have some gut resected. And from that we've been able to develop a, a really groundbreaking uh, new model of a preterm gut which we can grow so we can grow a little mini preterm gut and then we can obviously experiment with that and test hypotheses with that, so that's really exciting. But the really important thing for us is that we have preterm gut because the preterm gut is clearly different and will behave differently to those challenges. So yeah, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is important. Have you, already, have you started working on that? Yeah, so I don't do the experiments, so we have a, a doctor called Christopher Stewart who, who does that laboratory side of things, but yes, he has I think currently seven little preterm gut entroid models alive in Newcastle.